Hi, I'm Tana. And I'm Jen. Getting the right setup and positioning for eye gaze is extremely important. The eye gaze camera needs a clear image of the eyes to work effectively. The system should be parallel with the student's face. This means if a student is reclined, the eye gaze system should be positioned on a corresponding angle in front of them. A certain distance needs to be maintained between the student and the system. Each device will have its own recommendations, but this tends to be between 45cm and 85cm. The eye gaze system provides visual feedback on positioning as a guide to find the best spot. This can look a little different depending on the device. For students with complex positioning needs, a flexible mounting system may be required. There are a range of mounting options available. Some students may require different solutions in different situations. Everyone's eyes are unique. For the system to work as accurately as possible, we need to teach it more about how the student's eyes reflect light when they look at different areas. This process is called calibration. For some students, attending to targets on the screen can be tricky to begin with. It's not necessary to complete a successful calibration to start the very early stages of eye gaze. A default calibration may be used. Early eye gaze activities will support students to develop the skills they need to achieve a calibration down the track. The calibration process can be customised in a range of ways, including the number of points, the type of target, and its speed, size, and sound feedback. Greater accuracy is achieved by completing a calibration with a higher number of targets on the screen. It's not required to complete a calibration each time a student uses the eye gaze system. For systems used by multiple students, individual user profiles may be set up to store their calibration data and settings. A calibration may be updated or improved as a student's attention increases or as greater accuracy is needed. There are a range of settings and functions available with each different eye gaze camera and its software. These options may be different depending on the task the students required to complete. Control functions can vary according to the specific eye gaze system. This may include gaze selection, where the student first selects the task they want to perform, such as a double click, drag and drop or scroll, and then looks at the area of the screen they want to perform the task. The other is mouse simulation, where the student is using their gaze to move the cursor and may dwell to select. The amount of time someone needs to look at an item to make a selection is called dwell time. This can be altered to suit the student and some adjustment may be required in the initial stages to determine the most suitable timing. If the dwell is too fast, there is more risk the student will make selections they didn't intend to. If the dwell time is too long, it can be difficult for a student to maintain their gaze in the same spot for long enough to select. Our gaze is also Different systems and software have options for a student to rest or pause their gaze. This can be helpful when needing more time to look around an unfamiliar screen before making selections or when needing to take a break and not wanting to make accidental selections. Each system has its own options and settings. You can refer to the system manual or contact the suppliers to find out more.